Welcome back to VSTG Advanced Peace Tech. A software update is available. I think I'm really getting used to this, getting a lot of updates for my fancy S22 Ultra running the Exynos 2000. Now this time guys, what is interesting, we are receiving yet another June update. This time only 219 megabytes with the version AVF1. And it's very interesting because when you click on the Samsung provided link, just check the change log we are only receiving the information that the overall stability of functions has been improved and blah blah blah, blah. but there has been some announcement from some of the forums the korean forums from some people that are in charge of the camera and here this is the post i'm in charge of the camera the galaxy s22 june camera software update has been confirmed and will be released today introducing the camera updates included in the software update and there are these five interesting points, guys. I will read them together with you and I will try to test them. Right? Provide natural sharpness and improved context expression when taking a picture. Confirmed and corrected the phenomenon of one top stopping during single shooting. The alt white balance algorithm has been improved so that the original white color can be better expressed when shooting a puppy. So, I mean, this is really like a very dog friendly update optimized memory for video recording and improved ported mode performance and optimized the camera performance and this is all very 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 interesting so what i'm gonna do right now guys i'm gonna take some pics with the previous update and then take the same pics with the avf1 and just try to see if something really happened before the update the camera version that i have is 120076 so i will snap some pics right now and then guys install the avf1 i will do my usual things test how the animations are performing specifically this one test the apps opening and closing animations test of course the widgets and of course i'm going to put a focus on the camera stay tuned and if you're not subscribed for my channel then please go and fix this right now Thank you for watching. So here I am guys still using the old camera. I just want to show you the opening and closing animation. So opening the camera, closing. This is pretty much what we get on the update. I think it's the AVDB. The update that is before the AVF1. So switching through all the modes, you know, to 3, to 10x and etc. Zooming some pics, right? You can just see on my flat TV. Yeah, that's my green screen. It is not so bad at all, guys. Opening, closing has been kind of fixed. This was very problematic on the S21 Ultra for a long time before, of course, it was fixed. Now I can just see that it behaves quite okay. I'm gonna try snap multiple pics because in the AVF1, apparently what they did is they improved also the performance of the camera. So I would expect really opening and closing to be even better. And also, of course, finally, to try to get some ZSL, some zero shutter lag, which is very hard to get on this 108 megapixel sensor. But some opening and closing for your viewing pleasure before I now go and update this to the latest AVF1. And then I'm gonna, guys, show you the sample photos I did with the AVDB and then the AVF1. <laughs> Latest firmware install guys, just install it on my phone. I'm checking of course again, who knows, but AVF1, this is it. With the security patch level from the 1st of June. And of course the first thing I go, I check the camera version. So I just go in the settings about camera and I still see it's the 12.0.0.176. So I'm a bit surprised because honestly, I kind of expected also the camera up version to be updated, but this does not necessarily mean that Samsung didn't really play with the algorithms and with the quality and etc. So I snack some photos before and after. I'm gonna show them to you, but first I wanna test the performance, which means, of course, I'm gonna close everything and start with the camera opening, which is really not so bad. It was also good, I think, before. So opening, closing, yeah, no stutter whatsoever. All right, no big problems. Let me just try to go to 3x, 10x also. Take the front camera one more time, back camera, okay. So camera opening and closing, I 
now think that 100% we can confirm Samsung optimized it, all right? So this really was a problem for me on my S21 Ultra. It was also not very nice in the beginning of the S22 Ultra, but right now it behaves quite okay. It's time also to do some snaps to see if they improved also the ZSL or the Zero Shuttle Lock, which actually is, I think, impossible for the sensor, but... Mm, yeah... I'm not sure. Maybe it's placebo, but I pretty much think kind of like the speed is the same. Now it's time for me to show you the pictures I shot before the update, and then I'm gonna show you the pictures after the update, and you let me know in the comments what you think. Are you able to spot a difference? Is it good, is it bad, and etc. First picture I shot before the update, and I'm not sure if you can see this, I'm gonna try to zoom this guys, can you just see this one piece of hair? So that's the whole thing about updating the camera of the S22 Ultra because how can you improve something that is already very good and that's the story with the S22 Ultra. After the S21 Ultra I think Samsung really are on top of their game, what cameras are concerned, so it's really very hard to update and improve something. Okay. For me, this photo is almost perfect, so this is like a first photo before the update. Okay, that's a ported photo. By the way, ported photos here, uh, I want to show you guys, always problematic. These cutouts are not perfect. In most of the cases, they are, but they are always like these things. And yeah, it's kind of software, guys. We will never probably reach the proper DSLR hardware and you know, all big time zoom quality etc with the bokeh but it is what it is so still the picture is not so bad and then another portrait picture again guys this is all before the update I want to show you here the separation here is separation is a bit better so the cutout is a bit better and honestly you can probably trick somebody that this has been shot on something that is not a phone so the pictures are very very good another one with the front camera again here we are looking for the separation the hair see the individual hairs guys it's almost crazy but I think the software is able to recognize it dynamic range and yeah chest hair is there so really almost like perfect photos this one is okay i'm using my cat for a puppy because i don't have a puppy take a look that's a perfect photo and what we want to pay attention here is the cutouts which are not ideal not perfect okay one more photo though the pictures are really very rich in terms of detail dynamic range is also good and honestly i mean one cannot really complain okay this is also ported photo another one that's a pre-exported photo and it's a bit blurry here the cutouts are not perfect right because um, we know that in the AVF1 apparently they fix this on dogs and I really hope it works also on cats. Another one, okay, not a bad picture by the way, but see here guys, around the ears, it I think it could be really better. Then I did a picture on the outside just to be able later to see if there are some improvements on the contrast. But then again guys, my question to you is how can you improve something that is already great? It's of course very, very hard. Then I have here the 10x, the 30x, which is really like almost like crazy, like, like black magic. And then the 100x all right this picture i shot on purpose guys i wanted to illustrate exactly here the dynamic range of the contrast it's a very challenging scenario i'm shooting from inside the room where it's dark and outside we have the bright light so just notice this okay and then guys this picture all right which i have a lot of my boxes there pictures are very good already right this one is using the 3x and then guys now this is the first picture with the avf1 and honestly, I mean, if you ask me, okay, the white balance wise, yeah, this could be a bit on the warmer side. It's not so cool or so cold, so to speak. This was with the 3X, and I kind of like the um, the artistic look of the picture. It really looks like shot on a on a proper proper phone and I think cutout wise it's probably also doing a better job I'm not sure if they touched on that but of course it could be really placebo all right but take a look here guys at the hair right we still see the same scenarios where it's not great this is the same scenario from before it's for me it's like practically almost the same and this is the picture that I, that I shot outside and and honestly yeah it's it's still great and I cannot really tell you 100% I can see the improvements okay 10x 30x Maybe maybe the zoom got a bit better, I'm not sure. 
30x and then guys another picture here just take a look at the hairs it's pretty much the same I would say 100% and now that cat guys maybe maybe this is something that really changed because see here for the first time I can see the proper hairs on the ears of my cat uh, and I'm not sure it could be only placebo but I think the pictures really look great so my take on this as a hobby smartphone user that occasionally likes to do videos and photos I cannot tell the difference I have a feeling it might be placebo I'm not sure so maybe we need a bit more challenging scenarios with bright sunlight and etc and yeah then who knows but honestly the camera was not bad before the update so it's definitely not really 100% better after the update okay so if you have been here for this part of the video then all right this is it and now guys I'm gonna do the usual stuff test this animation okay yeah pretty much behaves about the same all right let's try to open some applications okay never the problem with this opening closing all right let's try to do Facebook opening closing let's try to do also the Spotify all right Spotify opening first time very slow for a reason we need to wait okay opening closing let's try to open Mixcloud as well so opening Mixcloud the phone really feels smooth in the hand guys trying to open here the chrome trying to rotate the phone so i don't necessarily see any kind of improvements there is this menu by the way quite nice also these animations they are perfect right now i think samsung really are getting better at this but they need probably to be also a bit more stable and do this for the other phones that support all right going to the left okay my google feed and etc not so bad at all let's try to open also twitter you now with the scrolling elements by the way i did a hack somebody told me to stop here the auto video loading and i think it's a bit better right now so overall phone performance is really about the same i did this mainly for the camera and right now guys i cannot be 100 if i can tell you and pinpoint okay this here is the improvement maybe maybe portrait photos of my cat are a bit better but again I cannot be 100% sure I have a feeling it might be also possible again it was a great camera before I'm not sure if they did it better right now and what is very concerning the camera version don't forget it is still the same so they even did not update the camera application so maybe they try to update some of the algorithms it is what it is guys I really hope that you have liked the video if that's the case don't forget to smash that like button subscribe for the channel until we meet in one of my next videos and with that said VST over and bye